In the following example, I will be discussing the table function in ECL and its use for aggregate analysis. The data that I'll be using is an ice cream data set with two columns, flavor and cost. There are two major uses of the table function. One is for a vertical slice or a non-aggregated view of your base data set. In this case, I can define a new record structure. Calling the table function, I can pass in my source data structure and project it onto this new record structure, which is a subset of fields. In this case, since I've only defined a flavor field on my destination record structure, I will only see the flavors in my output. This can be useful for slimming down the size of your data set for performance or presentation purposes and can also be useful to simplify the use case of producing a distinct count. In this case I can take that vertical slice of only flavor fields and then in conjunction with the dedupe and count functions I can produce a distinct count for the flavors in my data set. This would also work in the event of multiple attributes in my tabled result data set. In this case I have four distinct flavors. In the case of aggregate analysis I can define a record structure that includes the fields that I choose to see in my aggregate analysis along with attributes that are the result of aggregate functions against that data. In this case, when I call the table function, I can pass in a group by clause. The group by clause is used to define the group keyword in my aggregate functions. So in this case, I'm passing in my ice cream data set my destination record set, and then I'm defining flavor is the grouping parameter that's used in my count function. In this case, my result would be the flavor and then a count of each flavor within my data set. There are many different aggregate functions that are provided in ECL in addition to count. These include average, max, min, sum, and variance. Now in the case of these aggregate functions, because they operate against specific field values as opposed to just a total count of rows, you need to pass in the attribute that's used in that aggregate function. In this case, I'm still grouping on flavor but I'm using the cost in my aggregate average, max, min, and sum and variance calculations. In my resulting data set, I can not only look at the count or frequency, but I can look at the average cost, max, min costs, a total sum count, and a variance count. This functionality within the table function allows me to do similar effects by using that I would use in SQL with a group by clause.